we got friends. Well, good morning, everyone. This is uh, the third weekend in a row that uh, we've we've been on the bike, and that's pretty pretty awesome. Um, I'm fully loaded up today. Well, no tank bag. I'm trying to do no tank bag on days that we're doing off-roading because when I stand, my crotch, I have severe, li you know, mo limited movement with a tank bag. Um, there are some smaller profile models, but it's a little bit of a give up of convenience, but it just allows me to move around a little bit better in the seat. Uh, and and I, I have this GSA set up for touring. Um, what I mean by that is I usually have a backrest I have a sergeant seat, which is a nice, like, a touring kind of style seat. It's not a rally seat. And yet I still find the tank bag being restrictive if I'm not doing a straight highway touring. Uh, anyway, so for, much, so for the intro, um, we are, it's a piecemeal day today. So um, we've got Red Card in the front. He's leading us today. And uh, we are, so he was leading us, no, he was with us uh two weeks ago during our Dirt Days prep ride on this bike, him on his 690. And then uh, last week, oh, I like this road a lot. Last week we had um, uh, the other gentleman with me, which I, I keep forgetting his forum name. I like using forum names. On the 790 Adventure R, we did the uh, little class four ride together last Sunday. I was on the Beta. Yeah, this is actually a really nice uh, road for, for going down. Um, and then this week we're actually going to be going, we're doing a piecemeal. We're doing a little bit of NEBDR, the sections that are open, uh, including Sandwich Notch, which just opened. It's a great little road. Um, and then which is actually, I think it's probably that and Hurricane Mountain Road are probably Harry's two favorite roads. Um, and then we're going to be doing, um, bits of the hamster, H-A-M-P-S-T-E-R, um, which is a, an off-road ride. And then we're gonna be, we're basically gonna be then uh, going up to Errol, New Hampshire, uh, which is in the Pittsburgh Lakes region up there, uh, way up there. All the ATV camps are all closed up for the season, or not ATV camps, but yeah, snowmobile season's over, ATV season hasn't started yet, so it's kind of a go-between. Um, and I think we're gonna be camping basically like on the main New Hampshire Canadian border somewhere in that like sort of a that sort of a, 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 a setup for camping oh, it's an old train back there uh, the old caboose the yellow caboose um, so we're gonna be camping up there I think we're stealth camping I don't think we're actually going to a fairground or campground um, it was gonna be like five of us and then it was gonna be four of us and then last night Jesse who oh man I feel so bad for the guy uh, pack and dirt. Um, he is a Vermont resident. We're all New Hampshire residents. Uh, and because of COVID, there's a whole thing about crossing state lines and quarantining for two weeks, which we totally understand and we want to respect. Uh, but Jesse, so New Hampshire and Vermont are separated by the Connecticut River. It's just, that's, that's pretty much it. It's like a 75 foot wide river in most parts. And um, that separates the two states. Jesse lives uh, right over the river. Like he lives on the Connecticut River. So he lives 75 feet from the New Hampshire border, but because he's a Vermont resident and a Vermont plated dirt bike, um, he was concerned, he's, an, he's a responsible adult, he was concerned about getting ticketed and fined and you know having all kinds of problems by not adhering to the government uh, guidance on quarantining. So if he basically was caught camping with us in New Hampshire, he is a Vermont resident, even though literally you can throw a rock from New Hampshire and hit his house. Um, well, some people could, not me. So that, that's the reason why he's not with us. It's really a bummer, but I can respect uh, his, his need for, you know, staying quarantined safe. I love this road. So anyway, so we went from five to four, and now it's just three of us. And uh, which is, you know, it's a bummer, obviously. Um, but... It, it, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so, it's gonna be three of us. I've camped with Harry before. I have not camped with, I wish I could remember his form name, uh, before. Uh, I don't like using first names until I've gotten their permission. But um, it should be a fun time. I think uh, Red Card has his, uh, his fishing gear, so we're gonna do some fishing, do some reading. 
supposed to be a very chill day. We're going to take all day to basically go like three hours north. And so no real time constraints. It's Friday. Uh, Memorial Day is next weekend, and I actually work all next weekend with uh, property management, real estate work. So um, I've got two associations that hold their annual meetings uh, on Memorial Day weekend, and so I'll be working all weekend. But uh, either way, oh, we got a puppy here. Oh, he's on a thing. Whew, thank God he's on a uh, leash. He looked like he hates us. That guy hates us. All right, well, um, that's all for now. Just going to have a nice chill day. And uh, hopefully everyone, you know, we end the weekend without any broken bikes or engineer injuries. And this is nice, isn't it? Look at this. Just a little like unmaintained road, uh, which is covered with sand, uh, lots of bumps. Oop. Thanks for that tour of tech suspension. We're all settled here. Um, I, I, I got a confession to make, by the way. I spent all week looking at 790 Adventure R's. <laughs> But the problem is, I, I don't want to sell the beta. I, do, I refuse to get rid of the beta, uh, or a beta-like bike, so something in the 350 to 500 cc class of dirt bike, uh, and I refuse to ever get rid of the GSA. I've got to have a boxer in the house uh, for touring. So the 790 Adventure R is a like a $15,000 splurge before Farkles, uh, with, the, with the only benefit of the days where the beta is no fun and the GS is no fun, it's just right between. It's just, it's a stupid bike to buy, but I spent all week looking at them because they do look like worthwhile to, to get one. But maybe I'll grab one used after, uh, after I've replenished my savings account. I think 2020 is the worst time to buy a motorcycle, uh, especially if you already have four like me. Um, and plus we have the GS 750, Heather's bike, but it's a low model. So I really can't, I can't be at, BMW screwed up. They, they F, the BMW F750 is like not even in the same class as the KTM 790. That's just that, that you know BMW's F bikes uh, just don't even they don't even hang out in the same world as the KTM 790. So it's not the same. Um, anyway, I'm rambling. We're gonna go back enjoy this road. See you guys later. Hey, we got some uh, dirt. I've had the camera off because we've been on pavement this whole time. So great pavement, by the way. Thanks, Red Card. Uh, great pavement. A little stop there at a waterfall. That was nice. I'm having some technical issues with Bluetooth right now. <laughs> Look at this. We are in the White Mountains now. By the way, if you guys are doing the Northeast PDR through New Hampshire, this is, this is the extent of the challenging part so far. Just normal, unpaved roads that people live on. They drive their little Toyota Corolla's on, no problem. But you'll notice today, see the shake? Today, it's a little different because it is springtime, mid-May, and so uh, all of the um, roads were graded. So it's like quarter inch thick gravel, sand, dirt stuff. And so you gotta be a little more careful right now, but once the grading is done and this all gets settled down, then it'll be easier again. But So we are um, in Conway, New Hampshire. That's an L.L. Bean up here. I don't think I've ever actually been to Conway before. I've lived here for 10 years, but I just don't have any sort of interest in going up here. Hurricane Mountain Road. I've got one video on my channel called Hurricane Mountain Road. And I've got a couple more where we ride this road, but it's not like a highlight or anything. Uh, is this a part of the BDR? It's a fun road though, because you get some sweet air. <laughs> um, and it's a road that luckily we've never, we've never been caught behind like a massive RV on before, but it can happen even though the road's pretty clearly signed, but hey, you know, if you're a big vehicle, don't put on this road. Because it looks it looks deceiving, right? But watch, he'll get air like here. 
It looks deceiving, but it launches you. <laughs> yeah, you just you just hit the brakes because it's like, oh. <laughs> You're not kidding. Very loose gravel. Like marbles today. I just realized that we're in Maine. We, we're in Maine right now. <laughs> wow. Right? Yeah, we're in Maine. Back on dirt. This is actually a nice, uh, it's a very rustic looking road, but Um, but the quality of the road is really good. All right, so we're uh, we're still on the main BDR. Oh, sorry, Northeast BDR in Maine. Uh, Red Card thinks that we'll actually be able to finish the main BDR, the Northeast BDR today, um, and then still go to New Hampshire to camp. So, he said we're making such a great time that, so, we're keeping on. And now we get these roads that are maintained, but they're still used by logging trucks. Good thing they came in first. <laughs> you do not be blasting down there on a dirt bike. I have to hit the brakes. Harry's testing it out there because me with this 700 pounder, uh, I, I, I don't want to get down there. He's coming back up for here. Yeah. I'll go first. Yeah, you can go down with the bridge. You have to get hard right. Yeah, that at all. He and I have done way harder roads on this PS, but I think it's not luggage with me. That's a big difference. I wanted to see him go through it first. It was just, uh, it wouldn't be bad if the logs were on there, but the logs are there for a reason to keep it all intact. He's got a, he's got a cutter. Ooh, ooh. That was close. Let's see. Cancel. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is the workout right here. This sucks this much stuff on the bike, guys. Yeah, see? You fall down in the thing and you're kind of in it. I hope that's the hardest section. You think? I hope that is. Well, we've already seen some of the saturated soil already, so that makes sense they're trying to keep people out of it. Yeah. Well, guess what? If we, uh, this, is pretty, uh, this is pretty short stretch. Okay. I'll go this way and then make a next left. Okay. <laughs> this is awesome. We're like riding right next to the lake. Like right next to it. <laughs> yeah, everyone just got their own name. Zippity Doo Da Lane. <laughs> All right, that's funny. Is your headlight supposed to be on? Mine? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thanks. So, can you run zip tire from there? Yeah, are you going to go vertical? The red card was saying, oh, a little lake view up here. Red card was saying that we've been on the VDR for a while now, so I finally opened my GPX viewer on my phone and pulled the any VDR up. He's right, we've been circling it for a while. Um, pretty much most of the day since like Sandwich Notch. So I, I really thought it was like his own thing, but we've been kind of doing the VDR route. And uh, we've only had to do one go around due to our road being closed for the next two weeks. But other than that, we've actually, um, you know, I would, here's, here's what we're thinking. Based on what we've seen in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, uh, now we still got like an hour or so of riding to do, so it might get worse. But what we've seen so far is that the uh, the BDR seems to be worse in Vermont. You can thank Eric Milano for that. He just did a, an insane job linking together class four roads, and it's not something that most big bikes would even consider going down. And then, um, uh, uh, Andrew with the hamster route, you know, he did a great job, but it's very big bike friendly. Sorry. And Maine seems to be primarily pavement, which is amazing for Maine, given how, uh, but I should, I should pick my words carefully here. Maine is uh, a, a lot of private owned land. So it's actually kind of hard to link together. Oh, to link together um, dirt roads in Maine that aren't owned by logging companies, so you actually end up doing a lot of a lot of pavement for that reason. So, I think Maine is actually kind of a challenge to do, um, as is crossing New Hampshire. So I, I, I can I get into the challenges that they had, but basically Maine so far has been the most easiest. And I'm gonna guess that Massachusetts and New York are probably very similar to Maine in that regard. Cause you don't get too tired. You just sort of, it's a brand new bridge. You get to, wow, we're out here now. You get to experience it at your freshest. Although I wanted the bragging rights to do the whole thing in two weeks, the whole mid Atlantic and Northeast, but 
thanks to COVID, that didn't happen. And I'm kind of okay with it because it was just going to be a bragging rights thing. It wouldn't have actually been as much fun to do it all over the course of like 10 days. Main logging roads right here. And there's some, ooh, some, oh, this is small. <laughs> uh, and they've got some offshoots that get really gnarly. And uh, the problem up here <laughs> is if you're not a local and you are not on a dirt bike and you don't have a satellite phone or a communicator and a, a reliable map, uh, it, it's really dangerous. Uh, and what I mean by that is the isolation. We have no cell phone service. Uh, there's no cell phone service, it's isolated. Uh, these roads just seemingly, like you might be on a road for 15, 20 miles, and all of a sudden it just, it's just dead ends. I'm admiring the craftsmanship of this stone bridge. Like, as a bunch of people had to just basically lay this all out like this and then hope it lasted this long. But there's no masonry, there's no like cement, it's just stone on that middle part. I think those, uh... Ancient Mayans had it down pat. Yeah. It's getting a little sandy. It means we're getting close to a body of water, probably. Uh, as you can see, it just started to rain. If anything, the rain should help keep this dust down a little bit. Oh, we're taking a hard right here. Naughty moose. What'd you call me? I don't think we're supposed to go this way. Ah, oh, shit. Did we, did we, were you we supposed to turn around here? No, I think we're good. Some of the rain we're getting, I was hoping the 1.1 inches was, you know, I saw it was gonna be 5, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. I thought, oh, should be a light rain then. No. Now I know the rule that you're not supposed to pull the clutch in when you're off-road, but I was in second. Whoa! And couldn't scrub enough speed. Mixed. It's all man-made, so it's a mixed terrain of like, some parts are well-packed, others are not. Well, it wouldn't be a day riding in Maine without it raining on us. So every time I come to Maine, I get rained on. We got a moose. Look. <laughs> oh wow. I've never seen a moose before. Ever. <laughs> well, he's gone. Wow. I've never seen a moose before. So I think we're I think we're near the end now. <laughs> It's, uh, it's been going down for about an hour now. Um, so things are a little slick. I'm sure they're gonna start waiting for me. I, these, I, I'm, I'm just a little more careful than I used to be. I'm getting old, I guess. Uh, I like to have my windscreen. Oh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I would have my windscreen down. Um, but, that's <laughs> that tree right in the face. Um, but then I can't see anything. That's pretty awesome. Oh, another tree down. Hey, the... Uh the rain has almost completely stopped. All right, so this is supposedly a private road. And it says, pass at your own risk. I mean, maybe that's just a, ooh, look at this. That could just be a legal thing where there's like, you know, it's private land. We don't want to be held responsible for anyone that gets hurt. So let's just put the sign up. Uh, Maine. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> This, this still wasn't happening. Thing, we'll still further notice. Uh, and the three other ones I called didn't know one picked up, so it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Jesus. Give me a hit. Huh?
That is uh, that is a very unique boating expedition they're on. Well, they got a, I mean, they got a little shroud over them and stuff. Yeah, they got they got poles out. They're fishing. Grab some light. Sit over here. Let's perfect fun. Ah, okay. All right, I'll move to. Good morning, everyone. It's Adam here. It's uh, Saturday, 51 degrees in beautiful Wrangley, Maine. We were total wimps last night and did not camp, but uh, you guys all saw how bad it was. Uh, the storm, I, I wish I'd take a screenshot of this morning. The storm is massive. It's now moved over like Caribou, Maine area. It's moving east out to sea towards, well, towards Nova Scotia. That thing was huge. There's like bits of red and yellow and all kinds of crazy fiery colors in the middle of it. Um, I'm so glad that we didn't camp last night. Every time we pulled off, I wish I had some video clips, but we pulled off a couple times. And it was just mud pits. Every every kind of stealth camping we planned on doing was like just mud. So um, I've got one, well, I don't have a clip of it, but basically red car was in front of me. And I looked up in the air and I just saw mud over my head because he was just trying to get out of a pit. Uh, it was kind of cinematic, but also wet. So we made the, we made the right decision to split 140 bucks three ways and um, stay in a hotel or motel instead. I got some nice pictures this morning of some um, birds and stuff. It's fine, it's okay. Um, I'm not upset at all about the situation. We, um, we're we happier, we're drier and we're happier. We're not ice cold. So anyway, today we are heading, uh, we're heading towards New Hampshire right now. Um, I'm almost certain I'm gonna get comments about getting a hotel in Maine and not quarantining for 14 days before sleeping in Maine. Um, but this was truly an emergency in that we planned on getting back over to New Hampshire. It's only like a half hour ride, but it was going to be worse on that side. And we were just completely rained out. Um, no amount of Gore-Tex would have made that a pleasurable experience. Uh, remember this is a high deer, high moose area. And so it was unavoidable, truly. Um, so we're, we're basically, right now, wrapping up the first day trip by heading over to Errol, uh, making sure our gas tanks are topped off, and then we're going to head north to uh, Pittsburgh, Boundary Pond, New Hampshire area, which is the upper northern part of the hamster. <sighs> Got some good drone shots and hopefully some good pictures. It's a hydro dam, which this whole area is like hydro and timber, just like Canada. We're actually going to another spot uh, right next door, which is this. I saw this huge pile of lumber or timber. Uh, I want to get a photo in front of it if, if we can. It's pretty awesome, huh? I always have a huge fascination with dams just because the, the, the human ingenuity of them is so cool. This is basically Maine in a nutshell right here. <laughs> All right, we are in New Hampshire now. We just crossed into New Hampshire. Uh, so now we no longer have to quarantine for 14 days. I think the roads got better too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So there's snow up there on the mountains. We were just third gear cruising around 35 miles an hour. Red car today saw a black bear.
first. From the heaviest? No, tallest. The screen's the tallest. I don't want people in here. If I had a gap that I could see him in front of me and then you behind me, then that was a pace I was comfortable with. Because cartwheeling that thing somewhere was... Well, yeah, we would have been on the side of the road a lot longer if I had ran it off the road or something. Had a, you oh, know, if I hit a little yeah. bump and got ricocheted I'm out. very pleased with yeah. today's... I would have needed my camel toe. <laughs> I've always wanted to have a camel toe. Did you hear about the product? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so some of my rear hub is it's a five bolt setup and it's just a, it, the hub basically mates to the final drive. Well, a company made a product that's a plate. It goes between the wheel and the final drive. So you go on the center stand with the wheel off, with the plate on, and the plate has a bunch of hooks that you can put a, like a thousand pound rope on. So when you're doing the forward motion, it, it curls it up and rolls you up the hill. Okay, so pulling somebody out. Yeah, but instead of having to tie it around your spokes or something like yeah, that, the winch. it know, basically you know, is it because of my hub. Um, I was thinking about that. And it's called the camel toe. Somebody already came up with it. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about how can... Yeah, right there. Slide over. No double dipping. No double dipping. One shot deal. Oh my god. I used to carpool with this lady from Poland as well, okay. so I recognize it as well. Uh, plus we have, an, Europe a lot. Plus we have an office Poland. in Woosh. Awesome. <laughs> we have an office in Woosh. Country, by the way. I know. Roosh? Nice people, really? correct? L O D Z. Woosh. You don't have to like touch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the cone of virus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh. I'm sorry. Anti cone. I'm probably too close. No, no I fine. We're fine. No, we're fine. Beverly's good. See, Beverly's good. Mm. What, yeah. Why did you all come up here? I just, think New just, Hampshire is good too. It's a vacation? Like you guys don't, do you want this right now? Um, yeah, just Sure, let's, let's, un let's unpack and see what we have. Just a weekend. Yeah. Um, oh, I got my little lamp love here. We doing something hours of stop time. Uh, so this thing says so how much you've not moved. Quite, quite a long day Friday. And it was a mixture of rain and sun and yeah. clouds. Well, this is uh, day three. And we are taking the hamster trail home 
It's a nice dirt route that goes from um, well, the southern point of New Hampshire to the northern point of New Hampshire. And so um, it's just a nice way to, to get home without having to take any roads. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about the a couple things. So first, the uh, and I was leading the way, which is kind of nice. I got to really open up and <laughs> go as fast as I want to. And unfortunately, as slow as I wanted to other times, which probably upset the guys because they wanted to go a little faster in some areas. Um, the GoPro, you know, doesn't really warn you that the SD card is having problems. And so, um, throughout the trip, I was having issues with, when I pressed stop record, it was sometimes have problems or take forever to stop recording. And it started on day one and I just didn't know that was a symptom of the card being bad. And so, um... 90 gigabytes of 400, or about 25% uh, of the video that I captured was corrupted. And, and you know, you're probably sitting there going, well, it's already a 40 minute long video. But the thing is, I was going to turn this into like a three parter. Because um, some of the best parts, like us actually finishing the Northeast BDR, um, some of the best off roading, the best mud. The most like gnarly stuff, um, animal sightings, uh, riding through like quicksand like stuff. I mean, just really fun, fun parts of our trip. Us getting stuck in the rain and trying to find a camping spot. Um, all that is gone. And so, this would have been a three parter. Instead, you get a longer 40 minute um, adventure. And then finally, <laughs> on day three, the reason I'm recording this voiceover is because um, the microphone, look at this cute kid, the microphone um, wasn't working on day three. So all of my voiceover, totally gone. So I'm recording this uh, fresh. Uh, we came across this uh, motocross track uh, every Sunday for 25 bucks. You sign a waiver. Any bike can go out there. There were two guys out here on supermoto wheels and tires little kid just to give you an idea anyone can go out kids adults teenagers any bike uh, they said I could take the GS out there if I wanted to so uh, this place is like 40 minutes from my house and I'm gonna go back and uh, on the beta and do this because I've never ridden a dirt track before and while I won't be riding like this <laughs> um, I am going to go back and check it out so Hope you guys uh, look forward to that video at some point. Anyway, so, um, you know, overall, <laughs> it's awesome. It's such a such a fantastic trip. Um, you know, me and the guys had a good time. Not everything went according to plan. Uh, we got rained out one night, but uh, overall, we had a great time. We finally found a place to uh, motel and camp. Um... The bikes performed really well. I think uh, the GS Adventure with Nobbies was the perfect bike for this trip. There were sections that were a little bit harder uh, than others, but then other sections where the GS was just perfect. Um, like this long ride home here on the dirt ro dirt roads would have been boring on the Beta. So um, it was only three of us. It was supposed to be five of us, then four, and then three. But we made the most of it. And uh, we're planning to go back up in this area in late June and do it again. So, um, yeah, just had a blast. Just good, good, you know, good rapport. Um, everyone had a, 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 you know, was, had no schedule, no timeline, no worries, no rush. Um, you know, if someone wanted to stop for a picture or drink a water or to go pee, no big deal. And we didn't really have any sort of destination in mind that wasn't right around the corner. And those kind of trips um, are a lot more fun than having to like get to a certain spot at a certain time and trying to pack as much in because you're already cutting it so close. And so um, yeah, for that it was it was it was a good time. So we stopped here in uh, Canaan. 
uh, on the way back. Check out those flies. Look at all those black flies. And I uh, had a chat. Um, talked about the bikes. Talked about the weekend. Yeah. So I'm going to close it up for now. We did report, record a podcast by the campfire. I think you guys will enjoy it. Totally chill. Just telling stories about the campfire. Um, that's it. So come find us on the NHVT Central Rider Stud on Adventure Rider. And hope to see you out there. Ride safe.